In the first lecture, focused on the mechanical engineering design process, I introduced you to the role of the engineer as the creator and consumer. In either of these roles, the engineer is constantly evaluating and judging trade-offs between weight and cost, performance and cost, quality and cost, fit and finish, performance and robustness, as well as other critical trade-offs applied to the individual components, subsystems, or overall system product. I also introduced and provided motivation for learning a product design process. Every author of every design textbook, as well as every professor teaching design courses, as I will, put their own spin and emphasis on the design process steps. Truth be known, every engineering and manufacturing company I have consulted for over the past 30 plus years has had their own version or implementation of a product design process. In this lecture, I will introduce you to a formal sequence of steps or phases in what educators or textbooks tout as the generalized design process. I will emphasize which of the steps actually pertain to the bulk content of this lecture series. Let me re-emphasize. What is presented here will not align perfectly with what you may hear in your next design class or the one after that. However, it will generally align with what you will see in practice in industry. Sure, industry may have a few more steps or phases, or they may even call them by slightly different names. This lecture will provide a nice understanding and foundation for your future design classes and what you will experience when you enter industry. Let's begin. Engineering companies today often begin their design process with what is called market analysis. This is followed by a phase of gathering requirements and specifications for the product the market is demanding. Once the racks and specs are gathered and agreed upon, designers and engineering will begin the phase of conceptual design. Here, many brainstormed conceptual products are reduced to a few concepts that show promise. These few potential products are transitioned into the preliminary design phase. Emerging from the preliminary design phase will be the product that designers, engineers, and management believe stands the greatest chance of meeting or exceeding customer needs and demands. In detailed design phase, there are still significant unknowns that need to be resolved. In detailed design, the parameters of the chosen design are refined and optimized. Once the design is finished and released by engineers, the product enters the manufacturing phase. It is important to note that the manufacturing phase is equally as complex and consuming as all of the steps or phases thus far presented. Yet when given from the perspective of the design or engineering community, it is often only rewarded one step or phase as in the case here. The final design phase is a catch-all that includes product distribution, maintenance, repurposing, etc everything including retirement and recycling of the product. Let's take a few minutes and go deeper into each of these phases. By so doing, it will become clear which of these phases relate to the engineering design modeling and graphics course of study. What is market analysis? It is the time when the attractiveness and market dynamics of a product are studied with respect to its local 
and global competition. Strengths, weaknesses, and its chance of success are determined, and if the conclusion of the study is positive, the product idea is moved to the next phase of design. Before leaving market analysis, consider the following questions. Did Orville and Wilbur do a market analysis before building the Wright Flyer? Did Henry Ford do a market analysis on the Model T? Or more recently, did Steve Jobs do a market analysis on the initial iPod? You might be wondering what point I am trying to make. Simply stated, brilliant, innovative designs solve a marketplace need. Market analysis is all about determining if there is still room for a knockoff product in the market. The second phase, and where I believe the design process really begins, is determining the product or system level requirements and specifications. To do this correctly, the designer or engineer must first understand the market needs or customer needs. These needs must be mapped into what the product must do. Metrics and target values must be established so that the design and engineers will know when they have achieved the product that will meet the demands of the marketplace. When assignments or projects related to this lecture series are given, I will make sure requirements and specifications are clearly stated. This said, the design process focus for the engineering, design, modeling, and graphics lecture series really begins with the conceptual design phase. Pause the video and click on the link, Conceptual Design in Two Minutes. This video, Conceptual Design in Two Minutes, does an excellent job of describing what companies do during the design, the conceptual design phase. Make sure you return and continue this video lecture after pausing and viewing the YouTube video. You should now pause my video. Conceptual design entails looking at lots of alternatives before beginning the process of down selecting to a few concepts that you, the designer or engineer, take forward into preliminary design. Each open-ended project assigned in this class will begin with a conceptual design phase. This image shows various possibilities for a new Roxanne tag gun handle and actuation mechanism. Follow the link provided to read the full 4C design case study. A few conceptual tag gun designs were moved forward into preliminary design. Sketches were transformed into 3D digital models. Often the fine or precise details of a preliminary model are overlooked and not added. The goal in the preliminary design phase is to get a sufficiently complete CAD model that analysts can get reasonable results from their preliminary analysis. The goal of preliminary analysis is to determine which design provides the best chance of achieving all the established market and customer metrics and target values. This marked up image most likely came from a preliminary design review. In this lecture series, students will be asked to create preliminary models of sufficient detail for the purpose of doing preliminary analyses. In detailed design, Parts, assemblies, and the master digital assembly are modeled in true size and shape, having full detail and feature representation. Most models are carefully analyzed both at the part and assembly level. Results of these analyses are used to refine the parameters and definitions of the digital model. Eventually, the resulted 
models are used as the basis for producing all needed artifacts, such as working and manufacturing drawings, final photo rendering of the part and assembly models, weights and cost calculations, tooling and fixturing models, manufacturing planning, etc. It is also during the detailed design that initial hardware is made and tested which generally leads to the modification and tweaks to the digital part and assembly models. Here is a set of Lumar winch models. One has to ask, are these real or photo rendered CAD models? This image shows a number of drawing artifacts taken from the 3D winch model. While most of the weekly learning assignments given in this lecture series result in detailed CAD models and working drawings, you will be expected to apply and use an abbreviated design process consisting of the phases conceptual, preliminary, and detailed design on all four of the open-ended design projects. As mentioned earlier, the manufacturing phase is generally downplayed by academic designers and engineers. However, it is as large and complex as the steps we have already covered. At Brigham Young University, ME students are required to take a manufacturing process class. In this class, the students are allowed and capable of manufacturing designs and models created in the Engineering Design, Modeling, and Graphics course. The last phase in this imperfect design process deals with tracking and keeping tabs on the design after the physical product leaves the shipping docks of your manufacturing facility. While important, it is not a major factor or topic in this lecture series. Let's review. Name and order the seven phases of the academic generalized design process. Which are the three main phases that are the focus of this course? Describe how the phases differ from each other. For example, how does detailed design differ from preliminary design? 